Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to our broth in Angus, the garden, the garden of Scotland. And the sun isn't quite shining on us today, but that doesn't change how righteous we are in our pursuit of independence and freedom from Scotland, from Westminster rule forever. So I, I'm the MP for Angus. It's a great privilege and an honour to be so. And I got in in 2019. I defeated and removed the Tory MP for Angus. And I can't list all the mistakes that they made in their campaign, but I'll tell you the biggest one. The biggest mistake the Tories make, and they keep making it, is wagging their finger a bit like this and telling us that Angus and Scotland doesn't want another divisive referendum. Can you clear this up for me? Does Scotland want another independence referendum? Yeah. Are you right? Because I'm afraid it's 702 years rather than 700 years since the declaration of our growth. But it's amazing that to be here to commemorate seven centuries of basic common sense, that your country is best run from within the country by the people who live there. That was true 700 years ago, and it's true now. And that belief, that principle should alarm unionists everywhere. Because if the nobles of Scotland recognised it 700 years ago, then it's only got more true in the 700 years since. And the clarity and wisdom that those nobles showed that how can any country prosper under the subjugation of its neighbour? How can any country deliver self-respect or a self-belief in the opportunities that are before it or the talent of their people when they're ruled mercilessly? We, I'm down in Westminster every week, and let me assure you, they could not care less what we say. They have almost zero mandate in Westminster here. They've got precious little mandate in the Scottish Parliament, and they have no way, no way to make their broken, bitter union look anything other than a busted flush. And the crucial values of the Scottish people that don't make us especially different from the rest of the world, but we're not any worse than the rest of the world. And don't let's forget our incredible history, the Scottish Enlightenment, the proud Northern European that Scotland, a nation that Scotland was before we got dragged against our will into this union 300 years ago, trading across the sea with the rest of Europe, contacts and relationships in every European capital, a voice with the Vatican in Rome. Scotland was a nation before people really knew what nations were. So it's even more criminal that we're stuck in this broken, dysfunctional, corrupt mess of a state called the United Kingdom. So it wasn't it just the nobles of uh, Scotland 700 years ago that could see the future better than some that are alive today? Winnie Ewing, 55 years ago, said when she took Hamilton, and we all know it, stop the world. Scotland wants to get on. And that's a fact. We live in a global state-based system. So if you're not a state, you're just not. And how can we allow Scotland to continue in that non-state neverland? And the end, the, in Scotland, we don't need any lessons, certainly not from the United Kingdom. We know very well how to run our country. We know what devolution has delivered for Scotland over these last 23 years. But devolution is not the answer to Scotland's ambition. Devolution cannot unlock the potential of our people. And devolution will never sufficiently protect us from the maladministration of venal Tories in power at Westminster. And don't let anybody, especially not a Tory, but any unionist, lecture Scotland on our financial viability as an independent, independent country. Let me just set out for you a really simple bit of maths, that in 2008, when the financial crash happened, Scotland, the United Kingdom had £800 billion pounds worth of sovereign debt. And it had taken a century to build up that level of debt to 2008. Well, we're only 14 years after that, and it's tripled, friends, to £2.2 trillion. Pounds. And 
you know, you'd like to say that Scotland has to shoulder its share of the blame for that, but we weren't asked about the spending of a single penny of that. It's inflicted on us by people that have got no care for us or our future, and they'll keep bleeding us dry until we seize our independence from them. A famous uh, Labour career politician once said, devolution will kill independence stone dead. Do you remember that? I don't think that's working out how they thought it would. I don't think if they were watching this march through our broth or the marches through the other towns and cities in Scotland, they'll be thinking they've done a satisfactory job of killing independence stone dead. There's been six elections, friends, six elections to the Scottish Parliament since 1999. And an independence party in the SNP has won uh, every single one of them bar two. And that is never going to change because the people of Scotland have seen what's before them and they know what a positive choice at the ballot box looks like. So thanks for coming. Thanks for showing your support for independence. Don't be a stranger to our broth or Angus. Come back as often as you like. Have a safe journey home. And don't forget your smokies on the way out. Thank you.